trip to the dance in five years. North Florida searching for its second in three seasons. And we tip it up with Brian Shea, Pat Evans, and Vlad to dollar officials. Dallas Moore, the fourth leading scorer in the nation. Number 14 in Osprey Blue. North Florida team that was the three seed in the conference tournament beat Jacksonville by three in the opening round and blitz number two Lipscomb in the quarterfinals shooting 16 for 24 three and they turn it over on the bad pass from Romello Banks the Eagles first shot is Zach Johnson missing a three-pointer and not the strength necessarily of the Eagles shooting the three they will take it Advantage of when they have the opportunities, but this is a team that wants to get the ball in the paint lead the nation in points in the paint Do the Florida Gulf Coast Eagles, so they want to make sure they get their touches in the painted area More pass deflected finds its way to the freshman Garrett Sams who opens the score And that's a big bucket for a number of reasons when you start thinking about Garrett Sams the freshman coming into this environment And being able to get a shot to make a shot early gives him a tremendous amount of confidence throughout this game the Eagles are led by number zero, Brandon Goodwin, conference newcomer of the year and a first-team All-A Sun player. Their leading scorer at over 18 per game, and he has it in the corner. Goodwin short on a three, and the first two shots from deep for FGCU. And you see Garrett Sams actually clutching his rib cage a little bit. May have taken a hit on that last possession, but a great defensive stand off the bat from North Florida. An injury he's been dealing with already. Sams. Offensive rebound grab by Wajid Aminu and the freshman feeds the freshman Sams missed it right at the rim and it's off to FGCU Joe Dooley is the man who took over for Andy Enfield after that magical run in 2013 a long time top assistant at Kansas in his fourth season 20 plus wins at all of them Florida Gulf Coast has won the league championship last year as a four seed the top seed this year, dominant throughout the regular season. Wins over Stetson and Kennesaw State in the league tournament to make it here. And the Eagles turn it over on the entry feed to Morant. With another strong defensive stand by North Florida. But what you're seeing is the zone, and you can't really call it a 2-3. Not sure if it's more of an amoeba zone that was made popular by Jerry Tarkanian from UNLV. As you see... Matt Driscoll and what he's been able to do in this North Florida program. Turnover force on the pressure, and Christian Terrell has the first bucket for FGCU. And you see Florida Gulf Coast, they want to play 94 feet of pressure, but when you're playing against Dallas Moore, the A Suns back to back player of the year, you've got to make sure you get back in transition. How about 2,420 career points for you? That's a guy that knows how to get a bucket. Big to big here, Mark Eddy Norelia feeds Demetrius Morant. And Morant is fouled. And the, so the pressure from Florida Gulf Coast is designed specifically for this, the turnovers, especially when you get the ball out of the hands of Dallas Moore. You see the turnover turning into bucket for Florida Gulf Coast. But on the other end of the floor, Dallas Moore able to beat the pressure and then come up with the easy bucket on the second possession. 24 points per game. He is the fourth leading scorer in the nation. 135th consecutive start a push shot on the free throw from Demetrius Moran an odd shooting style as he misses both Moran by the way second in the nation in field goal percentage but you won't see that push much you're gonna see a lot of dunks from that young man well, most guys you see with with that high field goal percentage 75.3 for him you don't see him shooting a lot of jump shots nor do you see a lot of jump shots that look like Morant but when you're gonna watch this game you're gonna see a lot of Dallas Moore in the paint not just a three-point shooter it's although he puts up big-time numbers Goodwin up top and thrown down by Morant we told you he did that 92 dunks on the year for Morant and a turnover not quite taken by Banks for North Florida nice job sticking with the play Osprey's hit the glass and now FTCU has it with Johnson smacked near the head Well, they don't name you Dump City for nothing. And when you get inside the paint, you're always going to have one of those bigs on the backside able to finish. On the other end, Dallas Moore continues to attack the paint. 
His floater game, according to Matt Driscoll, one of the best in the country, had him watching a lot of Michael Conley Jr. to be able to pick up some of that. Dallas Moore shows you he can score in so many different ways. And that floater is such a key for Moore, who put his name into the draft process last year. Senior, hoping that he'll have a professional career. As for the first six for North Florida. Leslie Reed has checked in for FGCU. You see the zone from North Florida, and that's been their staple all year defensively. What they're trying to do is force you into that corner so they can trap you or have you taking three-point shots in the corner, which often are more difficult for opponents to make. Sam's nice adjustment. Mid-air for the 6'6 freshman out of Martin, Tennessee. And I don't quite know the numbers yet, but Sam probably has five field goal attempts already in this game so the freshman coming out actually six field goal attempts so the freshman coming out extremely aggressive oh Moran high feed from Johnson and a slam to second this FGCU team has more dunks now than the 2013 Sweet 16 team that coined the Dunk City moniker. And I, I mentioned earlier, but maybe there are not as many highlight dunks, but we've seen a couple highlights already in this game early. Chris Davenport. That's going the other way. It is raucous here in Alico Arena. The A-Sun auto bid on the line between FGC. Inside the painted area and tossing it up to the big fella on the backside. Dallas Moore, the back-to-back -back player of the year in the league. Second leading score in the history of the A-Sun, which is nearly four decades old. And 2,422 career points to boot. Oh, you counted in today's points. So yeah, you're keeping I'm, it running old math right there. Okay. That's 24-18 plus four, Corey okay. Alexander. Sounds good to me. I'm just glad you can add four. Yes, one of us can. <laughs> Goodwin misses. Morant hangs and spins it home. Three for three for Demetrius Moran. And we mentioned 75.3% field goal percentage. So, but he's not taking difficult shots, but yet using all his elite level athleticism, according to K coach Joe Dooley, as the way he's able to finish above the rim. 6'9, 209, first couple of years at UNLV, third year here at FGCU. Moore guarded by Reed. The trap from Kevin Mickle as well. He dribbles out of it and throws it into the hands of Mickle. Here's the point guard, Reed. Wrap around for Morant. Nickel throws it back out. And that was an example of Reed over dribbling. Morant actually was ahead of the pack and would have been able to finish, but it doesn't matter. He finds a way anyway. Four for four, three slams for Demetrius Morant, the nation's second leading player in field goal percentage. And the officials have momentarily halted play. With Ryan Shea over here at the scorer's table. Look, you look at the points in the paint. And the advantage, particularly in the semis, plus 28 in that department. They've had some games this year at GCU where they've scored 60 in the paint. But, you know, then they're a perimeter-oriented team. When you look at Goodwin and Zach Johnson, you're thinking that there's two guys that will probably shoot threes or whatever. But you, when they get inside that lane, they lead the country in points in the paint, over 40 points in the paint per game. And that's ahead of Utah and Kentucky, two teams that we've seen do a lot of damage inside the painted area all year long. Chris Davenport, the senior, into the corner of three, and North Florida still not hit one of those. That miss came from Aaron Horn. You mentioned North Florida not hitting a three. 16 for 24 in their semifinal win over Lipscomb, but actually got off to a hot start, making their first 12 out of 15 in the game. Yeah, first five overall as well. North Florida team that never trailed. Four on the break. High off the glass, no. And the long rebound to Morant. Rajon Tucker with a step in. No. Offensive rebound, yes, for Kevin Mickle. They like him off the bench. 6'7", redshirt junior and a Juco transfer, originally from Brooklyn. And Mickle, according to their coaching staff, their best defender. And he normally gets into the game relatively early, especially if someone gets off to a hot start. Wouldn't be surprised if we actually saw him at some point step out and guard Dallas Moore. Time to shoot Mamino who jams it for UNF. 
Wajid Aminu, the freshman, the younger brother of Al Farouk Aminu. And the freshman of the year in the Atlantic Sun, nine points over six rebounds per game. And listening to Coach Driscoll talk about Aminu, he told us, is regardless of how good of a basketball player he could become, he will never be as good of a basketball player as he is a person. He had nothing but praise for this young man and the way that he's conducting himself on North Florida's campus his freshman year. Started the season off the bench, has been a starter. 26 in a row after that. Nice floater here from the senior Chris Davenport, a three-year starter who's come off the bench. Yeah, Davenport coming off the bench this year, but still the second leading scorer on this team for North Florida. So he's a young man that, of course, they're looking forward to him being successful and having success tonight, especially for their veterans who have been in this position before. Kick ball. FGCU will keep it with a couple of substitutions on the way. Three starters are back in. That's one of the things you will see with Florida Gulf Coast compared to North Florida. There will be a lot of bodies in and out of the game for Florida Gulf Coast. They do a lot of substituting. North Florida, Coach Driscoll doesn't have as deep of a bench. And one of the things he doesn't want to do is take Dallas Moore off of the floor very much. So you're going to see more of a consistent lineup for North Florida than you will Florida Gulf Coast. Johnson back in with Norelia. And Terrell on a curb, what is a 6 nothing UNF spurt. And a foul on the floor will take us to the under 12. Dunn City revisited here at FGCU. Demetrius Morant, 16. And we talked about Dunn City being revisited. And when I thought about it, I said, there's no way that this team has the highlight level dunks that we saw back in 2013. But early in this game, Demetrius Morant has proved me a little wrong there because he's put on a show around the room. This from Trey Simmons. VCU transfer in North Florida pushes the ball with Dallas Moore. Florida Gulf Coast team at 25 and 7. Best record in their infancy as a basketball team in a Division I program. They come in winners of six straight, dominant in the paint. They defend now as Bottinger hits the first three to put North Florida in the lead. And that's what Bottinger did in the semifinal game at Lipscomb. We talked about the three-point accuracy of North Florida where he was one of the main culprits knocking down trees from the outside. And that's the way that North Florida can compete with the points in the paint for Florida Gulf Coast is make sure that they get their quality looks from beyond the arc. FGCU is 0 for 6 from 3 early on. North Florida happy they're taking those shots. Something that Matthew Driscoll talked to us about in shoot-around. And that zone will let you take some threes but take away the inside play. But the three is definitely a weapon for North Florida for the Ospreys. And we get an opportunity to see Aaron Bottinger knock down the three. And another thing about North Florida, they're not concerned about the college line. They could care less. They don't need to be up at the line. They will shoot them from well beyond the three-point line. Amino to the free-throw line where he is a 48% shooter. We see Coach Matt Driscoll, and right now, he couldn't have asked for a better start because when you think about what Florida Gulf Coast has been able to do with the dunks, especially inside with Moran, but yet they hold a four-point lead, he has to be happy with the start that they've come out here, especially playing here in the Lico Arena where they're the, you know, they're the enemy on this territory. It's certainly the loudest arena in the eight-team A Sun. Johnson... Into the paint, he has had a tough shooting start. Aminu throws it ahead to Moore. Dallas Moore from deep. Aminu with a tip to keep it alive. And Johnson wrestles it away from Romello Banks. Simmons, Marchetti Norelia, knocked out of bounds. And it will stay with FGCU. Hey, but the 32nd year ESPN Champ Week is all drama, and it continues tonight with the Big Ten and Pac-12 Women's Championship games. 7 and 9 Eastern on ESPN2, Purdue, Maryland, and Oregon State, Stanford, respectively. Streaming live on the ESPN app. A steal for Moore. Who will take it the distance? Whoa, Dallas Moore. That's actually going to be a technical foul on Aaron Bonninger. Smacked the basketball out of the hands. Of Terrell as he's taking the basketball out of bounds, and that's where you get 
Your emotions get the best of you. North Florida getting out on the break. Dallas Moore with the big finish in the dunk. But you see he and his teammates talking to Bodinger about controlling his emotions. You see the dunk, but right there, Bodinger smacking the basketball to Terrell's hand. It's just a case of the emotions getting the best of Aaron Bodinger. So Brandon Goodwin will shoot the technicals. He's their best free throw shooter, just under 79%. And that stops a 10-0 North Florida run. Might be a nice time to have a brief stoppage, too, for FGCU, which had started to spiral a bit. Well, what we've seen is a veteran group of guards, and even though Bodiger may maybe what wouldn't be considered a veteran play, but we've seen Bodger knock down the three. And Dallas Moore, these two young men have been through the battles before. We mentioned this team went to the tournament in 2015, but we continue to see Florida Gulf Coast attacking the paint and finding that lob on the backside. That's the first bucket for Mark Eddy Norelia. He's had an up and down year. First team all a son last year. He's missed time with injuries and personal issues as the team has noted it. But back to back double doubles with the season on the line here in the A Sun tournament. Aminu, left hand, no. Banks knocked away from behind. Stays with North Florida and Bottiger way off the mark from three. Aminu, the offensive rebound, finally taken by the hometown Eagles. Johnson and a foul. Well, we told you Dunk City was being revisited this year, and for the third time, we've seen Zach Johnson getting into the paint and finding one of his teammates. This time, it's Mark Eddie Norelia on the backside with the finish. How about this number? Dunk City team, 148-37 games. This year's team has surpassed it in 33. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Math Guy. How many do they have? We know it was 148. They came into the game tied. Oh, you correct? just saw the graph, 150. Okay. No, I didn't look at the graphic. I'm asking you. <laughs> that's right, folks. That's Corey Alexander ignoring the screen. Remember, that was Corey, not Kevin Brown. Oh, believe me, there's going to be a lot of things that you say that I'll clarify that that was not me saying that here today. Two for two for Zach Johnson, meanwhile. FGCU back within two. And you see Davenport handling the basketball. Coach Driscoll very comfortable with his bigs handling the basketball. A lot of it has to do with the fact that he wants to be able to run Dallas Moore off screen. Open three, good from the corner. It is Bonagier still fired up. To give North Florida a five-point lead. And when you look at the way that Florida Gulf Coast guards, guards Dallas Moore, you're going to leave open opportunities for his teammates because he draws so much attention. Bonninger knocks it out of Terrell's hands illegally this time. <laughs> way to clarify that, buddy. Here's Moore. Scoops it around to Aminu. This is a North Florida team, folks, that you might be seeing is 15 and 18 at the bottom of your screen. They played a ton of power conference, what are known as guarantee games in the offseason. Do not be fooled by the record. They are playing their best basketball now. Oh, Johnson tried for the high-flying slam. No good. And then Goodwin picks up the steal. And then Goodwin swatted away by Davenport. Saved to FGCU. Goodwin hacked. It is an absolute circus in here. Two free throws for Brandon Goodwin when we return. And North Florida getting it. Bubble. Well, you're assuming that Wichita State, if they don't win, would get in that large day, correct? I, I would think so. But you're saying if Illinois State does not win, would they? Because if they win, of course right. they're going to get in. Wichita State's a little bit higher on Joey Brackett's uh, bracket math right now. Okay, got it. See if we can have a black phone dial into the bracket bunker for the latest update. Why not? That's good when it hits two. Yeah, that's sweet. You ever been in the bunker? No, Joe? no, I'm, I'm claustrophobic. Don't like, don't like bunkers. Okay. I'm good with that. I like to see open air. Give me windows. Huh? <laughs> Five point lead for the three seed North Florida in the A Sun Championship game.
Ospreys, who won the league championship in auto bid 2015. Florida Gulf Coast, which claimed the championship last year in possession. And you see North Florida sticking with that zone and another opportunity above the rim. That time, Major John Tucker was fouled going for the I'll just say that <laughs> well, because I wanted to waste some of these time for 15 seconds. That's why. Yes, I do think that that Florida Gulf Coast will attempt to get inside even more than they have. But yet, they don't want to take away Goodman and Zach Johnson in the way that their guards have been playing, attacking the paint. Norelia goes right out of Mina with the two fouls, put back for Kevin Mitchell. And we can't forget about the offensive glass, which has been such a weapon for Florida Gulf Coast early in this game. Second chance points, and they've been attacking the offensive glass, and that's really a lot of the area where they've had so much trouble. Where North Florida's had so much trouble keeping them off the glass. Sam's that was way off the mark out of his hand. North Florida just two for eight from three, but make it three for nine as Sam's has the second chance triple. In a pickup game, then they would be saying two for a dollar. Knocks down the second one, 50%. That means you're a great shooter, right? Say Let's yes. get back to him, Bolden. <laughs> Sams, who is playing with noticeable rib pain here, he's touched it a few times, has hit a couple from deep. Norelia, no. Nickel throws his body in, and he commits a foul. Now, that's the one thing we haven't seen from Florida Gulf Coast in this game. Normally, when they're catching the ball in the mid post, they're looking for that dump down pass. This time, a great decision by Aminu not to even cover Norelia, allowing him to take that mid range shot. But when you look at it, points in the paint, North Florida matching Florida Gulf Coast. We mentioned earlier, Florida Gulf Coast leads the nation in points in the paint. But right now, it's even. The difference in this game has been North Florida knocking down three three pointers so far. FGCU 41 and a half points in the paint. They have quite a ways to go to hit that average still. North Florida toe to toe with the top seed in the conference. FGCU team that swept the regular season series, although the two meetings came within six days of each other, January 25th and 30th. That has been one area where North Florida has struggled early in this game is handling the basketball. I believe that's six or seven turnovers. Already in this one. Reed with the floater. Reggie Reed, a sophomore, with his first bucket. And that's an example as to why Florida Gulf Coast is so good in the paint. It's not all about their big guys scoring, but when you think about Zach Johnson, Goodwin, and Reed also, they attack the rim as guards and do a very good job finishing. Davenport throws it away at seven turnovers against North Florida. And there is an injured player that's a Minu. Boy, with Banks already on the bench with three fouls. You know, with Banks on the bench with three and a Minu out. Carlos Odom, 6'7", sophomore, has checked in. He did not play in the semifinals. He's number one, bodying Norelia right now. See if FGCU tries to take advantage of that. Reed does feed Norelia. Goes up on Odom, who knocked it away, but Norelia has the second chance bucket, and we're tied again in Alico. And now we're starting to see the Mark Eddie Norelia, who was the leading scorer a year ago for Florida Gulf Coast, and holds the single season record for points scored in a Florida Gulf Coast uniform. North Florida creeping in on about three minutes without a basket. It's Davenport. Mikkel, a terrific defender all over him. Osborne Blunt's first shot attempt. And Blunt came in and made two big three-pointers in the second half versus Lipscomb in their semifinal game. So, of course, he's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence coming into today as well. Norelia try to take over. Boarded by Sams for the three-seed North Florida. Looking for their second NCAA tournament in three years. Sam's hounded by Tucker and foul. A foul against Tucker, sending us to the under four with North Florida on the road. Not biased at all, but okay. The, as, as crazy as the ACC has been this year, why would we expect for it to be any different That's when right. we get to Brooklyn? Don't you live in Brooklyn? I do live in Brooklyn. Then that means Brooklyn's crazy. 
I mean, if you live there, it's got to be a crazy place, right? Some crazy things to happen. Cause and effect, I think. <laughs> Dallas Moore for North Florida, searching for its second title in three years. FTCU looking for three and five. Got an offensive foul. And going to be another turnover. Now eight turnovers for North Florida. And that's really been the only thing slowing them down offensively. Been able to shoot the basketball extremely well. And playing good offense, but when you turn it over and continue to give Florida Gulf Coast opportunities at the other end, that can make it tough for you, especially when you're playing here in Fort Myers. Foul is on Carlos Odom on the illegal screen. FGCU, which has 20 points in the paint, is shooting just 10 for 28. Norelia up and fouled. Aminu has two already. It's not on him, though. They it's Dallas Moore. And that's a good thing. Now, one of the things that Matt Driscoll talked to us about and Aminu did it on that possession. We've seen it a number of times in this game. Is being staying vertical for their bigs when the when players are coming to the bank to the paint for their bigs to jump and defend the shot, but stay vertical and not swing down, which is often why their players are not picking up fouls in those possessions. But that time Dallas Moore getting in and taking a swipe down low before the basketball actually got to Aminu. That POV, that principle of verticality that has been such a point of emphasis in college basketball the last couple of years for Matthew Driscoll. Eighth year at UNF. Long-time assistant at Baylor. It's a big 12 battle here with Driscoll from Baylor. And Joe Dooley, who spent a decade in Kansas on the opposing sideline. Yeah, these two coaches have a, a lot of familiarity with each other. Going back to the big 12 days you mentioned, of course, this Florida Gulf Coast team taking on Baylor earlier this year and playing them extremely tough in Waco. Lost by nine we're down a point with just under three minutes to go. Also lost by just one and a controversial ending at Michigan State. Oh, how about Blunt? A step back three for the redshirt junior, his second triple. And continues to add to that dangerous weapon of the three-pointer that North Florida is using and gives his team a little more separation after a 26-all tie. We've seen a 6-2 run from North Florida, and Blunt having a lot to do with that. And this time, he was able to catch and shoot on the previous one. This time, the step back to create a little space and knock down the tray ball. They were slow to start from deep, but there's a reason North Florida has coined the hashtag Birds of Trey. It's 16 of the semis, 5-4-11 today. Moore with a three. Foul, and Moore will take three free throws. Zach Johnson hit him, and Moore will head to the line where he's an 82% shooter. And you see, when you're the back-to-back A-Sun player of the year, you gain a lot of respect. And this time, Dallas Moore, a little too much respect. I think that was Zach Johnson there trying to get in there and picking up the foul. Moore started the season with a five-point outing against Auburn. He was one for 13. He scored double figures every game since, including that incredible effort in the quarterfinals. 37 and a three-point win over Jacksonville. But watching him against Lipscomb in the semifinals, he really was more of a facilitator than he was a scorer for getting into the paint and finding his shooters. So Dallas Moore is one of those young men. I mean, of course, he scores 24-plus per game, but he's not out there just trying to get points. He's about winning and doing whatever is necessary for his team to be successful. Johnson misses on the floater. Norelia keeps the possession alive for FGCU. Goodwin off to Norelia. No. Goodwin again. Third chance. And a great defensive stand by Minu, playing with two fouls in that possession. More to the corner. Blunt. Aminu knocks it in the air. And Terrell has it for Florida Gulf Coast. Look out for Norelia down low. Instead, Goodwin hits his first field goal. Thought we might see another alley-oop, but Brandon Goodwin finally hits from the floor. Well, that's been an adjustment by North Florida. Now their players are not running up on the guards and allowing those alley-oops to go over the top. So it's been solely about making the guards finish. And that was the first time that these high-power guards have been able to finish against this North Florida defense. Moore does not hit the runner. Up top here, and Aminu knocks it out. And another great defensive play by Aminu. Florida Gulf Coast is shooting 35.5% in the field. They are fifth in the nation at 50.3% coming into the game. 
Bottiger staring down Johnson. Five to shoot for Bottiger. Aminu, tough angle. Oh my, Aminu, off balance. Way off balance. Been able to do defensively, and more importantly, been able to do that defensively with two fouls. Coach Driscoll going to take him out of the game to try to conserve him for the final 30 plus seconds of this game. I mean, of this half. He doesn't want to pick up that third, but give him a lot of credit for what he's been able to do on the defensive end. North Florida shooting just under 50% for the field and playing outstanding defense against an FGCU team. It's fifth in the country in field goal percentage. A three for Johnson. Yes! Johnson was 0 for 7 before that shot. Moore with three. Moore on the floater. Off the glass, and Dallas Moore extinguishes the first half.